I'm Andrew Edwards, and you're watching Gear Live. LG and Samsung have announced their main flagship smartphones for 2020 in the Samsung Galaxy S20 lineup and the LG V60 ThinQ 5G. This year, both companies are coming out swinging with premium Android smartphones, with LG looking to beat Samsung on price. In this video, we compare the features of the Samsung Galaxy S20 to the LG V60 ThinQ to find out which one is truly the better buy for most people. What is going on tech squad? Andrew Edwards here, editor in chief of gearlife.com. And as I mentioned today, we are taking a look, we are comparing the Samsung Galaxy S20 lineup against the LG V60 ThinQ 5G. What a ridiculously long name. Although technically, I guess the official name of this phone is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G as well. So ridiculous names all around, but that is besides the point. We're gonna be taking a look at and comparing different aspects of these two flagship Android smartphones with my goal hopefully being to help you make a better buying decision based on the features that are most important to you. By the way, we are doing a giveaway for an iPhone 11 or Samsung Galaxy S20. We will have two winners. Each winner can choose which phone they want. Link to the giveaway is down in the description below as well. I've been able to spend time with both lines of smartphones and there are a lot of similarities between the two, especially as it pertains to the Galaxy S20 Ultra, which is Samsung's top of the line flagship and the LG V60 ThinQ, which shares a lot of the same specs at nowhere near the high price point. Of course, full reviews of the Galaxy S20 line as well as the LG V60 ThinQ are coming. If you don't wanna miss them, be sure to hit the subscribe button and bell notification icon down below. But without any further ado, let's jump into the comparison. We will be taking a look at five key areas, those being the display, the price, the camera, the battery, and the internal hardware. So let's kick this off right now, starting with one of the most important aspects of any smartphone, the display. The Samsung Galaxy S20 comes with a 6.2 inch dynamic AMOLED display with a 3200 by 1440 resolution at 556 pixels per inch and a 20.9 aspect ratio. The S20 Plus comes in at 6.7 inches and the Galaxy S20 Ultra maxes out at a ridiculous 6.9 inches. The Galaxy S20 lineup also sports a 100 Hz refresh rate, which you can enable when using the phone at 1080p. The display also supports HDR10 and HDR10+, and is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 6. Switching over to the LG V60 ThinQ, you've got a 6.8 inch OLED display. So that's right between the sizes of the S20 Plus and S20 Ultra. But this display has a 2460 by 1080 resolution with 395 pixels per inch and a 20.5 by nine aspect ratio. One unique aspect here is that LG is offering a dual screen case with the same specs, giving you two displays to work with of equal quality. Now, LG's display is technically not as high resolution as what Samsung is doing on the S20 line. However, out of the box, when you buy an S20 smartphone, it will also be at 1080p resolution in the setting. If you want higher 1440p resolution, you need to enable that yourself, which techies are probably gonna do, but the average consumer probably won't even think about. Also, while Samsung uses Corning Gorilla Glass 6, LG is using Gorilla Glass 5 instead. Now, personally, I think the 120 hertz mode that Samsung added to the S20 puts those displays over the top. However, a couple of caveats. Number one, you can only use 120 hertz when you are set to a 1080p resolution. You cannot use it at 1440p. And number two, turning that on does cause a significant hit to the battery. On the S20 Ultra that I've been testing, I'm seeing about two to three hours less battery life per day when I have 120 Hertz enabled. Now this in particular has that 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So this can take it, but I don't know that I'd enable it on the typical entry level Galaxy S20 myself. And of course, alternatively, LG is offering that dual display experience, which you're not gonna see 
on any other flagship smartphones this year. It's different than a folding phone because you can take off the case and just use it in single screen mode, which is I think still gonna be the best way to use a smartphone until foldables get a lot more durable. All right, next comparison we need to do is one that just about everyone cares about who carries a smartphone, and that is going to be battery life. The Samsung Galaxy S20 has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. The S20 Plus has a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, and the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra has a massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery. The S20 and S20 Plus support 25 watt charging, while the Ultra supports 45 watt charging. However, you will need to buy a 45 watt charger separately from your S20 Ultra purchase because they do not include that faster charger in the box. Now, these are the biggest batteries that Samsung has ever included in the Samsung Galaxy S lineup, so that is great to see, and it is a massive improvement. Samsung revealed their phones before LG did, and I was under the impression that you'd need to shell out the money for that large battery this year, and we will get to price in just a couple of minutes. However, on the LG side of things, it was equally surprising to see that they are shipping the LG V60 ThinQ with that same 5,000 milliamp hour battery that we're seeing in the Galaxy S20 Ultra. However, while matching the battery in the S20 Ultra, LG will be pricing the V60 at less than the entry level Galaxy S20. So if battery life is one of your main concerns, it looks like you'll be able to go with LG for a lot less money if you want 5,000 milliamp hours. All right, now it's time to get to one of the main reasons that people buy a new smartphone and upgrade from their old phone in particular, that being the camera system. Starting with the Samsung Galaxy S20, you're getting a triple rear camera setup. There's a 12 megapixel primary lens, a 64 megapixel telephoto sensor, or in the case of the Galaxy S20 Ultra, a 108 megapixel telephoto sensor and a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens as well. When it comes to video, the cameras are capable of shooting 8K ultra HD at 24 frames per second, 4K at 60 frames per second, 1080p at 240 frames per second, and 720p at 960 frames per second. Over on the front, you have a 10 megapixel selfie camera and Samsung's big feature this year with the Galaxy S20 You've probably seen it all over the place. It is super zoom. Super zoom allows you to do 30x digital zoom on the S20 and S20 Plus and goes to 100x digital zoom on the Galaxy S20 Ultra. These images are not really that great at all when zoomed in like this, but even going up to a 10x zoom can produce great looking shots, which is something you wouldn't get on other smartphones. Now, I did a couple of videos taking a look at my favorite features on the Samsung Galaxy S20 camera using the S20 Ultra in particular. If you wanna see those, I will leave a link up here as well as down in the description below. Now turning over to the LG V60 side of things, LG has opted to go with a dual camera system this time around. However, they do it with a few tricks up their sleeve. First of all, you're getting a main 64 megapixel camera and a 13 megapixel super wide angle camera as well. On the back next to those cameras, you'll also find a time of flight sensor. The LG V60 is also capable of recording in 8K, 4K and full HD. And on the selfies front offers a 10 megapixel camera, just like the Galaxy S20 series. Now, the interesting thing about the way LG is using that 64 megapixel camera is that even though there isn't a dedicated telephoto lens, the megapixel count is so high that LG can use this camera to give you the 2X zoom and produces 16 megapixel pixel bend images. Now, honestly, having used both of these camera systems, it pretty much seems like they are fairly equal. Now, obviously, Samsung has the super zoom feature, but I don't know that most people are gonna be using that one all that much. The average consumer is gonna take out their camera, point it at something, and take a photo. And when you do that, both cameras come out looking great. In addition, 8K recording is available on both, as is 4K recording, and I actually think that is the bigger story here. Android smartphones of the past have always suffered as it pertains to video, especially 4K video, when compared to Apple's iPhones. This is the first year I feel like you can pick up 
a Samsung phone or an LG phone, switch over to video mode and get great looking video with no compromises like you can with an iPhone. And that I think is the best praise I can give these cameras here in 2020. Next up, let's talk about the internal hardware of these devices and how everything matches up. The Samsung Galaxy S20 is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 chipset, which is an octa-core 64-bit, seven nanometer system on a chip and is paired with an Adreno 650 GPU. The base S20 variant comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. And the S20 Plus and S20 Ultra can be purchased with an upgraded 512 gigabytes of storage. All S20 models are expandable up to one terabyte through a micro SD card slot, and they run Android 10 with the Samsung One UI 2.0 on top. When it comes to 5G, the Samsung Galaxy S20 smartphones support both sub six 5G as well as millimeter wave 5G with the exception of the entry level Galaxy S20 that will only support sub six 5G unless you purchase it on Verizon in which case then it will also support millimeter wave as well. Looking at the LG V60 Fin Q, you're gonna find a lot of the same. We've got the same Snapdragon 865 paired with the same Adreno 650 GPU. So the processor and graphics are matched perfectly between the two phones. The V60 comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage, but it's expandable up to two terabytes instead of one terabyte using a micro SDXC card. It also runs Android 10 out of the box. And as far as 5G connectivity goes, all LG V60 models will support sub six 5G unless purchased on Verizon, in which case it'll support sub six and millimeter wave as well. Now, one unique hardware feature that needs to be called out on the LG V60 in particular is the continued inclusion of the headphone jack and 32-bit quad DAC. Now, Samsung made fun of Apple for several years for removing the headphone jack and then last year decided to follow suit and remove it from their smartphones. Meanwhile, LG keeps the headphone jack for anyone who wants that high quality wired headphone experience along with the great sounding quad DAC as well. In fact, if you are a wired headphone user and want the best sound out of your smartphone, you're gonna be hard pressed to find a better device than the LG V60 here in 2020. And last on our list for our comparisons is one that everyone takes into account when they pick up a new smartphone and that is price. Starting on the Samsung side, we're seeing the most expensive launch lineup in Galaxy S history. The entry level Galaxy S20 starts at $999.99. The S20 Plus sells for $1199.99. And the Galaxy S20 Ultra starts at $1399.99. Now, meanwhile, on the LG side of things, they have not yet given us a solid launch price for the V60 Thin Q. But what they did have to say was that the V60 Thin Q would cost less than the entry level Galaxy S20, which means it'll cost less than that $1,000 price point, which is interesting because we're seeing a bigger display, almost as big as the S20 Ultra, which costs $1,400. And we're also seeing that 5,000 milliamp hour battery in the V60 as well, which matches up to what the S20 Ultra is offering. So it seems like in some cases, the LG V60 becomes the better value when you're comparing these two flagship Android devices. So I wanna hear from you. What do you think? Did LG do enough to get your attention and potentially your money for the LG V60 ThinQ along with that second display? Or is Samsung impressing you enough with their new camera system to make you wanna go with a Galaxy S20? Or are you sticking with what you have now and waiting to see what's coming next from Apple or Google or Huawei? Etc. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and I will meet you there for further discussion. If you wanna hear more on the comparison between the LG V60 and the Galaxy S20 and a bunch of other thoughts, be sure to tune in to the Geared Up podcast. Geared Up is the show I do each and every week with John Rettinger where we take a look at the latest in tech, gadgets, and games and bring you all of our thoughts and impressions 
so you can listen to us when you're on the go. Just search for Geared Up in your favorite podcast player and you will find us right there where you can subscribe. Again, guys, any questions you have about the S20 or the LG V60, drop them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Edwards and I will catch you in the next video.